Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Global climate change mitigation is amplifying the demand for good quality, low impurity metals, but South Africa's mining industry needs to be more globally competitive to take advantage of this trend. Martin Kremer joins me in studio to discuss this statement. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. Where is the demand for quality minerals most evident? Well, you know, it's again China. China has a particular air pollution problem, so it does everything it can to try and mitigate climate change. We see it's probably even going to ban, you know, the normal uh, internal combustion engine soon. But when it comes to metals and minerals, it wants pure metals and minerals, it wants high quality metals and minerals so that there's less air pollution. But there's also another benefit, of course, there's a cost benefit. So we look at all these terrible things happening in the world of climate change. We look at the hurricanes in the United States and the damage they're doing and the statements that scientists are making saying this is climate change in action. We've never had such bad weather and we've never had such flooding. And everywhere people are trying to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen and in one of the areas it's also in metals and minerals and it's going to have an impact on, on the iron ore quality, on the manganese quality, it's also going to have an impact on which metals are, are in demand. We'll see that with the electric vehicles, you know, all sorts of uh, new demands come in for manganese as well but also f for nickel and cobalt and, and metals that can get perked up as a result of the world absolutely adamant that they've got to change the way they do things uh, and make sure they don't pollute the air. Can you discuss the price premium associated with these quality metals? Yeah, like the price premium on, on iron ore, we told, has gone up 15-fold. You know, it was like around $1 uh, per tonne and suddenly it moved up very fast towards $15 per tonne. And then when it comes to manganese, manganese with less impurities, less phos, is preferred because it makes the actual production of uh, metal uh, of steel cheaper. So those sort of factors are coming in. There are companies that are prepared to pay for quality, even if it goes be above the benchmark price, because of the benefits they can get, both in mitigating climate change and also cutting costs. And how has this trend impacted on African rainbow minerals? Yes, and this was brought to the fore by Mike Schmidt, the CEO of African Rainbow Minerals, and it became a theme at the latest presentation of results, how quality is really, as he's been saying for some time now, is an important factor, but he says it's really amplified at the moment. And <coughs> that benefits South Africa because I've noted many people coming here remark on the quality of our manganese, you know, that you'll see miners come in and they say, you know, these seams are really high quality. And also those that have are associated with Kumba iron ore, they talk about the lumpy iron ore, and those operating in the Northern Cape, like uh, African Rainbow Minerals in association with Asmang and As ore, they have got a lot of lumpy ore, which attracts this premium. And it's important that South Africa does benefit from this, that we have got the quality, uh, which means we get put to the front of the queue a lot of the times, uh, and that's a great advantage for us. And what future mineral demand does the fuel cell electric vehicle have? Yes, and, and you see, you've got two types of electric vehicle. You, you've got the battery electric vehicle, which is putting demands on, on manganese and cobalt and um, nickel, which is also produced in the stable of, of um, African rainbow minerals. You know, when it comes to nickel, they can do it. When it comes to manganese, uh, they can do it. But on the platinum front, to a lesser degree, it's been slower in coming forward, is the fuel cell electric vehicle, which of course we've tried to promote <laughs> a lot because we feel that it'll help South Africa because it'll put a demand on platinum. And that's one of the things that African Rainbow Minerals keep in the back of their mind that you know the demand for this platinum uh, is going to rise once the hydrogen infrastructure is increased for vehicles that have got fuel cell uh, driven power. And that will uh, mean that the demand for platinum group metals lifts in the same way as we're seeing these other metals lift. They have shot ahead of platinum 
a bit, but this has not dissuaded the likes of African Rainbow Minerals that, you know, PGMs are a good space to be in. And they have made it clear that they will stay in Platinum Group Metals. And are the company's projects well placed to meet the future demand for manganese and say copper that many electric vehicles will consume? That's right. You know, you see that they, African Rainbow Minerals do, did move out of copper. Uh, uh, latest uh, move with Vale in Central Africa, they decided to withdraw because the particular asset they had was at the wrong cost level for them. It was going to be a problem for them. So they decided to withdraw. But that doesn't mean to say they want to be out of copper. They're still very, very keen on copper because copper, I mean, of all the metals, is probably going to have a, a demand pull second to none in this modernized world because cars, particularly once they go electric, are going to use a lot more. It will be an exponen exponential leap. So they want to make sure they look around for assets in copper, but they're not prepared to buy unless it's in the right cost quartile and unless it's in the right quality position. And perhaps, you know, as things stand now, it's not going to be easy to get hold of these copper assets. We can already see that you know South Africans have fallen asleep at the wheel when it comes to the Prisca area. How you know on on Monday Australians will list on the main board as a secondary listing. They're coming in from Australia. Orion will list on the main board of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange because it's targeting copper in Prisca. Now that's an old copper town. You know we've known about it for a long time. Anglovol was there. It's also zinc, which is in in demand at the moment. But um, the Australians were more wide awake <laughs> than the South Africans, so they've got in there. But it's clear that you know if, that African Rainbow Minerals wants to get into copper. Exactly whether they'll be able to do it on the terms that they are laying down remains to be seen. But again, you know th that is another metal that uh, we're seeing <coughs> that can be very important to them. But they've got a lot of other, if you look at their assets and their partnerships, they're able to scale up quickly in iron ore. They're able to scale up quickly in manganese, you know, with this quality manganese. Even on the nickel side, if, you know, that demand builds because of the electric vehicle for the sulfide nickel, the Incomati will be able to accommodate that half of what is produced there is in that area that uh, can be used for the electric vehicle and they can still go underground there. So just about every asset they have is sort of at the ready to expand when the market decides this is the right time they can put their foot on the pedal. And what did um, ARM CEO Patrice Montsepa have to say about the latest iteration of the mining charter and its impact or its role in helping South Africa become or remain a attractive investment destination. Yeah, he's very, very uh, passionate about the South Africa's position as a competitive destination for investment and at every opportunity Patrice Motsepe, who's the founder of African Rainbow Minerals, he calls upon South Africa, not only the government, but he calls upon everybody to try and make sure that this is a competitive investment destination. Because the failure to be that will be you know, the decline of an industry called mining, which is really the flywheel of our economy. So he makes a point at every presentation trying to emphasize to the government, but to all stakeholders, unions, uh, investors, everybody, that you know this country must have that legislative framework that encourages people to invest. And it's a very important statement that he keeps making. And he's saying that you know this mining charter three needs to be looked at in that context, because if you examine mining charter three, it actually damages South Africa probably irreparably if they go ahead with it as it is, uh, as an investment destination. So he's saying, look at the rest of the world. You know, people will not invest here in mining. They will go elsewhere. They go 
there's a, there are places in the world that they will choose ahead of South Africa, which will be to the detriment of South Africa. So please, all stakeholders, get your sights set on being competitive. And if you do that, you'll see that things like Mining Charter 3 should be non-starters because they are getting in the way of South Africa being competitive. And if it's not competitive, you don't get the investment. And there's no ways that you know you can do this internally. Mining, you need deep pockets. You need the world's pockets to come in. People have got to wait a long time. They are typically investors who understand mining, so they know that you've got to wait f for some time. But the reward at the end of it can be very good, so they're prepared to, to risk those funds. But if they see from the start that it's not going to get them anywhere, they'll, they'll just go elsewhere. And we need those foreign investors because you can't just rely on the local savings to do this. Uh, it's just never happened in the past and it'll never happen in the future. So you've got to have the legislative framework that is correct. And Mining Charter 3 is getting in the way of that. Thanks, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the South African mining industry.